Ground ball to Kleber Torres, and that'll do it. A no-hitter for Corey Kluber on a Wednesday night in Texas. Kluber becomes part of forever. My guy, how we doing? Doing good. Uh, it's been a minute. As you can see. Yeah, dude, it's been a while. We had to uh, skip last week. A lot of stuff is going on. I got to give you a big congrats. Graduation. Oh, thank you, bro. Yeah, yeah. we're uh, officially graduates. Yeah. Of Both of us down the real world now. So. <laughs> no, yeah, it's crazy. Time is going yeah. quick. But Yeah, I heard uh, the folks were out there, though. You guys went to a Dodger game. Yeah, yeah, we did. We caught the one, yeah. the Sunday one against the Marlins. Um, okay. You know, it was great. I was like, I was looking for, I was like, maybe I'll get Kershaw. Maybe I'll get Bauer, Bueller. I got uh, Jimmy right. Nelson. Ooh, Jimmy yeah. Nelson. No, that's Dang always on. what you want to say, like the start. And I think Corey was missing for that game. Yeah, it was fantastic. But beautiful hey. ballpark, though. That was the second yeah. time been there. Love it there. Yeah. Chavez Ravine, man. That's a place I'd love to go. One of the top ballparks on my list, for sure. Dude, um, it's, it's nice. Yeah. It's, if you get yeah. out here at some point. Yeah. Definitely. You ever been to an Angels game or no? No, no, at some point I want to. Yeah. Even just okay. to see trap. But I feel like the ballpark. Yeah. Really yeah, definitely. I think it, like the background there is awesome, but like no one yeah. talks about it because it's like the Angels. So. Right, but right. I think There's it's like, here. I think it's like just as cool as LA Stadium, though. It, it just seems pretty cool. So, yeah, at some point, it's about like an hour from me. So I think at some point, okay. I'll check it yeah. Yeah. You got a, you got the different background this week. Yeah, I'm uh, back in New York, back on the island. Yeah, so a little bit different here. You know, I, I got all these baseball things up here, so I didn't have to hang up all the jerseys this time, you know? Uh, yeah, this stuff's been up here. A lot of these old uh, – these are old fatheads. Remember those? Uh, oh, yeah. I don't know if those yeah, are still yeah. a thing or not. But um, so I got, like, the fucking big pack one year, like the 160 of them or whatever, of, like, the small ones. So that's all of these from, I think, 2013. Oh, so sure. – uh, it's kind of hard to see them, but there's a lot of old players over there. Like, you got, uh, I don't know, Vince Segura from the Brewers, Stanton on the Marlins. I was going to uh, say. Some guys from different the, teams uh... over there. So, uh, it's pretty cool. I uh, got some retired guys up, too. So Got you, got you. Nice. Yeah. Give me, uh, what was uh, your favorite moment from last week? Last week, man. Uh, there was a lot of cool stuff, but I think you got to go with Corey Kluber's no-hitter against his former team in Texas. Mm. Um. Corey pitched a solid one inning for the Rangers last year. Yes. And on the night of his no-hitter, it happened to be Corey Kluber bobblehead night. Oh, because okay, okay. The Rangers the had his bobbleheads from last year, and they never gave him out because he never pitched after that one inning. Right. So they decided, hey, I guess it's a great idea to give him out if he ever comes back. Well, he comes back, and then he throws a no-hitter on his bobblehead night. So that was pretty funny. Damn, bittersweet. Yeah, that's also what the second time they got no hit this year. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's interesting because the Rangers got no hit twice, the Indians got no hit twice, and so did the Mariners this year so far. No team's ever got no hit three times. Could definitely happen. It's only May. I feel like it it's is. just bound to happen. Plus, with Kluber too, though, it was really interesting. Um, everybody knows you got him called as the clue bot. No emotion, really, he just does his thing. You could have thought that after his no hitter that he had just given up like eight runs in like an inning. He was like not excited or anything. Like he gave Higgy a like a hug after like when it first happened, and then like everyone's mopping him on the mound or whatever. And then he's just like so stoic. He's just like, yeah, um, I just thought my pitches were great. Like no smile, nothing. It was just like classic Corey Kluber. Dude, that's funny. <laughs> I remember yeah. what was it was a few years ago. Like uh, Derek Rose hit the game winner over the Calves. Yeah. And everyone's going crazy. He just had like this stone cold face. That's why I <laughs> it's think like, like, dude, I, f- I feel like sometimes athletes just stay in the zone. Like they don't yeah. even realize the like magnitude of what they just did. So they're just like still in the zone of like what just happened. And they're like all serious and shit. You know what I mean? It's kind of cool. I don't think I'd be yeah. that way, but it's, it's kind of oh. cool. I kind of admire it. Yeah. Uh, me too. So uh, it was cool too, because again, Kluber had been through a lot of shit the past two years. He broke yeah. his arm on a comebacker in Miami in 2019. Last year, like I said, he pitched an inning and then he was injured the rest of the season. So uh, a lot of people were questioning how good Kluber was going to be, including myself, a lot of Yankee fans. And so far, so good. <laughs> yeah. Great pickup. Cheap one. Yeah. What do you got? So honestly, dude, the Grand Slam Tatis hit yesterday. <laughs> it was pretty sick. I mean, I don't know, just something to be said where, like, he hits it, you see the whole crowd stand up, he's kind of just yeah. walking, and then eventually does the flip. I mean, not that, like, other players don't, like, that doesn't happen with other home runs, but, like, 
it was just a sick moment straight yeah. to center field like 440 <laughs> feet it was pretty sweet Dude, slam diego for a reason you know it's back the san diego's <laughs> back nine yeah. in a row now i realized they were in the first row. they are and the dodgers are a game behind them and the giants are two games back so it's a great race. Giants yeah. are starting to dip though, man. I don't know. Two games isn't a lot, but like we've been talking the whole year. The Giants have been in first place. Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. No, nah, maybe they're coming back to earth a little bit. I also thought this past week at one point, the Mets were playing in Miami and the Marlins were wearing their new like city jerseys. All so right. they were to honor the Havana Sugar Kings. So that was a triple A affiliate of the Reds from 1954 and 1960. And they were kind of cool. I think I they, they were, were like cool. orange with like pinstripes. It almost looked like they were like, yeah, reddish orange, almost like a scarlet color or something. It was definitely yeah. different for Miami too. Um, but I, yeah, I liked it a lot. Um, yeah, it was cool because they were kind of honoring like the Latin stuff um, because like it was Cuba. Right. And it was, it's kind of nuts that like you think about it. I, I was reading up on it a little bit. They hoped to be like the first MLB team that was like in a different country like not in the States and like it never oh, ended okay. up happening. Obviously Toronto and Montreal ended up being the first ones, but um, they were close, I think back then. And they obviously they ended up being a triple A team. So it was pretty cool. Um, honestly, dude, I, I liked these better than Boston's. Uh, I don't know how you felt. Yeah, about it, I would agree with that. Boston's were just so off from like their usual colors that like, it was too weird to me. I just don't think the yellow was a good. Yeah, I I, I thought yeah. the Boston Marathon thing was cool, the tribute. But yeah, but I like these a lot. And like, that's just it fit Miami. You know what I mean? Like Havana Sugar Kings. Like oh yeah, Latin no, Miami, that's, that's such you know? a yeah. flashy like Miami thing to do. And those helmets were cool too. So they had like blue on the helmets. Also, I think the brims or something on the helmets were blue. Yeah. So they had like yeah, that and they were pinstriped. Like that was weird to me. Like the white pinstripes, that was so throwback. Like, because it was the red color or the orange color, or whatever. Right. And it was white, white pinstripes on that part. So that was pretty cool too. Are you guys getting the city jersey this year? I forgot what are the teams. It's like six different teams, I think. I don't think so. I think it was them. I think the Dodgers, the White Sox, and the Cubs are both yeah. getting it. And uh, one other team was. I don't think the Yankees are. And maybe Toronto. But yeah, because I know we've talked positive. about this, but I forget what the yeah. teams were. Yeah, there was one other one I forget though. I don't think it was the Yankees or the Mets. Well, I I think every city though is going to be pretty cool, obviously, because these two have been different, and a lot of people have liked both. So no, I, I can't mess with them. All right, time for who's hot and who's not. Who you got for hot? And I got someone who's been fucking raking this week. Uh, for the Braves, they're catching up in the standings to you guys too. But um, I've noticed. I got a <laughs> got a third baseman, Austin Riley. He's been hitting 462 over the past week, 12 for 26, six homers, 11 RBIs, 1.772 OPS. Those are some video game numbers Pretty right fat. there. <laughs> I mean, I, Freddie Freeman's been slumping the whole year. Uh, he's been hitting homers, but his average is way low for him. I don't think Ozuna's been too hot either. Swanson hasn't been great. Riley has finally broke out, I think, because everybody knew he had the power. You remember when he first came up, I think, in 18 or 19, and he just was, like, clubbing homers that first month, and then he kind of cooled off. And he's always been, like, a strikeout guy since. He's lowered his strikeout numbers, and now he's – that power is there. So, uh, I yeah. think – because everybody was always, like, do the, do the Braves want to get Bryant? Do the Braves want to get Jose Ramirez? Do they want to make this trade for a third baseman? Now, oh, I think all those talks better shut up because Austin Riley has proven that he's here to stay. Damn, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. especially with losing Darno too. You talk about the guys yeah. something. Yeah. I'm gonna go with got? uh Trey Mancini. He, last seven, he's hit 440, three homers, 10 RBIs, 1536 OPS, and now he's leading the league in RBIs. He he's leading the league in RBIs? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Mancini leading the league. Yeah, who would have thought? Bro, <laughs> when cancer goes to bed at night, it checks under its bed. For Trey Mancini. <laughs> Dude, Ed does, man. That's fucking awesome to see. Like, especially because he's like an Oriole and he's leading the league in RBIs. They have like the worst record in the league right now. Like, that's nuts. Yeah. No, he's he's yeah. the only one apparently. But wow. yeah, no, shout out to him. Do they have like a comeback player of the year? Is that a thing? I think they do. I think it's I mean, I think it's a lock already. That I feel like him. yeah, it has to be at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, they do. So I think that's definitely for Trey. That's all Trey. Plus, he could be a trade candidate. 
We've True. talked about a lot too. He could be out of there and he could help someone out a lot, dude. He could, cause he could play first, he could play outfield and he could play DH obviously. So yeah. Um, true, true. We'll keep an eye on it. Who you got for uh, slumping? Yeah, so slumping, I got a guy, I guess he's not very well known, maybe more so now because the Rays were in the playoffs last year and they made the World, World Series and stuff. Uh, Yandy Diaz, he plays corner infield a lot for the Rays. Um, last seven games, he's hitting 172, um, no homers, one RBI, 0.372 OPS. That is like extremely low. As you never see an OPS, that's more like one OPS number, like an on base or a slugging number. Right. 0.372. That's that's, that's both. So that's not very good. He's usually known for his average more so than power. So that could be why his OPS is low, but he's hitting 172, like I said. So that's not very yeah. good. He hits better against lefties, but still, I don't know. It's not too hot. And, um, Listen, at the time we're recording right now, the Rays have won 10 straight. I was going to say, like, this is all yeah. happening as the Rays are, like, red hot. Uh, yeah, so, like, their starting corner infielder is tanking, and they're still doing this good. So, um, that's pretty insane to me. They've been playing some good teams, too. I think they just swept Toronto over the weekend, who's yeah. been obviously hot. Like, Vladdy's been insane this year. And uh, so, they played them. I mean, they're somehow finding a way, as the Rays always do. That's classic yeah. them. Yeah. It is. Even with losing guys in the offseason, that they would do that. Yeah. Exactly. I'm gonna go uh I'll go Justin Turner. He's like he so starts off red hot. Right. And now his last 15, he's been 143, no homers, one RBI, 423 OPS. So basically as bad as Diaz was. Yeah, that's uh Man, he did start out super hot, like we talked about on a yeah. few episodes before this. That's tough. Uh, I think he'll turn it around because the Dodgers always – players on there always do, but it's it's yeah. something to look out for, though, for now. Especially with Corey um, now out for yeah. – what is it? It's at least several weeks. It's a while. I think, yeah, because he broke – what did he break? Something in his hand, right? His finger or his wrist or something. Um, yeah. And I think, yeah, he was going to, he didn't need surgery, but he was going to be out for like four to five weeks, I think. So that's a long time, especially it sucks for him. This is free agent season two. Oh so, yeah. Uh, no, definitely. Hopefully he'll be back and be healthy, but yeah, JT has got to pick it up. All right. For what it seems and not what it seems, this ties in a little bit with a trade that just happened with Milwaukee and Tampa Bay. So the Brewers got Willie Adamas and Trevor Richards from the Rays. And then the Rays get, uh, reliever J.P. Fireson and Drew Rasmussen from Milwaukee. So we can touch on that a little bit. I want to go a little bit into Willie Adamas now. So he he came from the David Price trade, if you remember. He was like right. the main piece from that. So a lot of people forget four, that. Yeah, yeah. He was, I mean, it was, I felt like a lopsided trade, but still like you thought he'd be better than he was. But yeah. so 41 games this season, he's been 197. 625 OPS. I mean, last postseason, he had 136, no homers, 41 OPS. His last full season, two years ago, he hits 254, 735 OPS. So, and then in his two games so far with Milwaukee, he's had two RBIs, two for six. But so, is he what he's seen? What it seems? Is this the player he is? So, I'm I'm saying his the player he is right now is not what it seems. I think he's more so the 2019 version of himself. Um, you know, I think again, Willie Adamas has the energy of like the, anyone. He could match anyone's energy in the league. He is a great hype up guy. Um, I think doing bad last postseason really fucked him this season because I think that's still in his head because of the Rays losing the World Series. I mean, think about it. If you're the starting shortstop for a World Series team and you're hitting 130, you hit 136 in that postseason, is that going to weigh on you or what? Like, the next season? Yeah. Especially if you lose. Like, if you win, then it, whatever. But, like, they lost the World Series. So I think that's part of the reason why he's doing so bad this season. I think getting a change of scenery is going to help him because now he doesn't have to think about letting the Tampa fans down as much. He's got a new fan base. Yeah. Um, plus, again, he had 20 homers in 2019. I was going to say, I just leave that part yeah. out. Yeah. So 20 homers, again, like 
52 RBIs. A lot of those homers may have been solos, but it depends on where he was hitting in the order, too. I know sometimes he hit leadoff. I think sometimes he may have hit towards the bottom as well. Um, and he's proven that he's durable. Last season, he uh, he played in 152 games. So, I mean, in 2019, he played in 152. So right. that's almost a full season. I mean, that's only 10 games off. That might have even been a 10-day IL stint. So he might have played every day that he possibly could have. Yeah. Um, plus, he's great defensively. Um, he can pick it with anybody. So I think um, I think he's more so the 2019 version of Willie Thomas. I agree. I think he'll probably get back to that. He's probably about like an average shortstop. I feel like he's not yeah. going to be a star. He's also he's only 25. You know. Exactly. That is again. That's another thing people forget about him. Even myself. Like I didn't know he was only 25 until I looked it up the other day. I was like, wow. Yeah. Like, when I saw the trade, I was like. Wow, so he's kind of getting up there, I guess, but he's not, bro. He's like 25. That's young, dude. Yeah. Um, and like you said, he ain't going to be in that tier with like Story, Baez, Lindor, but he's a decent big league shortstop. And every, again, everyone also, think about this for a second. They have Wander Franco coming up pretty soon. True. Race. He's a top prospect in baseball. He's going to be better than Adamus most likely. So that was the biggest reason why they shipped him out yeah i think i don't think it was even because he was like doing i don't think they cared i thought i think they believed he was going to pick it up anyway but franco is obviously going to be a stud so uh they needed to make some room and they grabbed those two bullpen arms man whenever bullpen arms go to tampa bay you've seen this i've seen this they suddenly blossom and become stars that's their shit they love that um, so yeah. yeah, they got some new openers now, however they want to use exactly. them. So, exactly. Yeah, maybe he picks up a little bit in Milwaukee. But yeah. moving on, much. the Minnesota Twins are tied with the Orioles for the worst record in baseball right now. At the time we're recording, they're 17-29. and 29, Last place in their division. So what's going on there? Is, is that who they are? Man, uh, this is a tough one, I got to tell you. Because that division's better than we thought. I mean, the Royals have kind of dipped, but they're still ahead of the Twins. Yeah. Think about this. The Twins are ahead or behind the Tigers right now. That should put things into perspective. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. There are some things happening there that don't look good. Um, some guys getting on the IL. Cruz doesn't seem to be the same player. Not that he's doing bad, but he can't carry that whole team. Snow no. has been horrible. Snow has been horrible. Uh, I think he's batting like 140 or some shit like that. Um, I think that this is what it seems, to be honest with you, this season. Mm. They could always turn it around, but it just doesn't look promising. I mean, it wasn't even looking good before Buxton went down. No. And he was playing at MVP level. I mean, you think about it, like, we talked about Kalame a lot, too. He's been bad. He's not even in the closer role anymore. Right. Um, you know, I don't think Angelton Simmons has been great, the new signing that they had at shortstop. Um, I think they, there's, like, one, one stud kid. You know, remember Alex Kirilov? He debuted in the postseason last year against the Astros, actually, in game two because someone got hurt. And then he's been pretty good this year. Him and Cruz have been pretty much carrying that team. Donaldson hasn't been amazing either. I don't know if he's battled any injuries or not, but I don't know, man. Their starting pitching hasn't been great. Um, it's just – it doesn't – it looks like a mess over there, in my opinion. And yeah. I, I, I kind of agree. I, I feel like it, it's kind of what it seems. I don't know if they'll finish in last, but I don't know what's going to turn it around. I guess Buxton could come back and get hot. Cruz can right. kind of pick it up. I guess, like, maybe I mean, Sano could. I, I just – I kind of feel like that's asking a yeah. lot. There's, like, some guys there that definitely could turn it around. Like, Max Kepler is another one who hasn't been great. Um, Jorge Polanco hasn't been great. You know, I mean, but you think about these names I'm saying, a lot of them are, like, former All-Stars or, like, former great players. Like, yeah. Mitch Garver, their catcher, too, was, like – a. Uh, silver slugger two years ago like they have players that are good obviously like if donaldson and cruz and sano do what they're supposed to do they're as powerful as anybody but like right now their pitching is a mess Mm -hmm. and 
I don't know, man. I, I think they would have to make some drastic trades or something to change everything around because it just yeah. seems really distant right now. I agree with you. I don't think they'll finish in last because, let's face it, Detroit is not good. But, yeah. you know, the Royals improved. The White Sox are good. You know, the Indians are going to pitch. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a tough division for them. Yeah. No, definitely surprising. But, yeah, yeah I mean, they got a couple of guys back. We'll see. And yeah. then – Next up, we got Gavin Lux here in L.A. So now that Seager's hurt, he's, like, getting his first consistent playing time. At shortstop, that was his natural position in the minors. And since taking over that role, he's been 385, two homers, which are both grand slams, of course, and then 1121 OPS. So what do you think yeah. of him? Man, <laughs> he's what it seems. Are you kidding me? This kid's a stud. He just literally has needed playing time. I think he got called up in like 2018 and he's been like on the yeah. bench. He plays every once in a while. He's never consistent, but like he was their top prospect. I'm pretty sure for a while now. And like we've said about the Dodgers, they just have these guys. They just keep calling up these left-handed hitters that are yeah. just amazing. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously second base can be viewed as an easier position than shortstop, but if you never really played it and you've just played shortstop, it can be tough. And that can affect your hitting because you're thinking about defensive things. That could have been the issue with him earlier in the season. He wasn't doing great when he was playing second. He was pretty much the starting second baseman. But now that he's the starting shortstop, you really are seeing him come into his own. I'm curious. This, I don't know this is an overreaction. Do you think, let's say he finishes up the year, he's like a pretty solid shortstop. Do you think that affects them resigning Corey? Or at least, like, the price that they're willing to go. Dude, I mean, it's hard to see Corey Seager in another uniform. Yeah. Let's face it. The Dodgers have a lot of big contracts there right now, and they're going to have a lot coming up. And more coming up. Mm -hmm. Like Bellinger. I mean, they have bets right now. I believe Walker is not signed. Yeah, yet. he's not. They're going to probably re-sign Kershaw. Will Smith is going to have to get a contract at some point. Mm -hmm. I mean – in a perfect world, they re-sign Seager and Lux is amazing at second base. But in a world where you have to worry about financial constraints, I could see them letting him go depending on how Lux does these next three to four weeks until Seager comes back. Because if he performs at a Seager-type level like he is right now, I don't know, man. I, I mean, he's obviously going to get paid less than Seager would, so – yeah again it's the dodgers we're talking about so they don't really give a shit about money but still. no <laughs> i don't know what do you think yeah i, I at the moment I, I feel like they're still gonna end up re-signing cory but something to think about especially with how much he's gotten hurt if yeah let's say he doesn't he comes back and he's not playing at like a elite level i don't know sam because yeah. he's gonna want a contract as big as as big as frankie as big as tatis so if not bigger. Yeah. I don't know if he deserves bigger. Obviously, Seager's a great player, but. Yeah, but they all want to outnumber each other. That's exactly. like when Lindor exactly. got like the one million more than. Exactly. So, I don't know, man. It's going to be interesting. Um, you never really talk about like a guy replacing someone else on the Dodger roster, but you never know. I'm also curious to hear your thoughts on. We'll do a little deep dive on unwritten rules in baseball. Oh, so man, that's a great subject, huh? Dude, the, so the Tony La Russa, your men Mercedes thing, it's happened, it was probably at least over a week ago by now, so we won't go too much into that specific incident, but, you know, basically Mercedes swings on 3-0 count with a big lead with the position pitcher on the mound, then he gets thrown out the next day, and La Russa kind of just like, yeah, you know, that's kind of okay. I I'm kind of tired of this, man. I I'm tired of this, like, silliness of, like, Oh, we can't offend the other team. We we should, we have to kind of just like stop when the score is high. I'm curious what you think of it. Dude, that is such bullshit. It is so fucked. Fuck that, dude. Let the kids play is a fucking motto, and everyone is not letting that happen, dude. I mean, he, <laughs> this is something everyone was worried about too, specifically about Larusa being two generations older than the players. Yeah, like literally, he said publicly that like everyone on his team felt the same way that he did and like as he did that interview there were guys doing an interview at the same time saying the exact opposite of that what are you talking about T <laughs> like, freaking tim anderson like tweeted out after that like i yeah. got like tim mercedes like i got you man 
I know. It was funny too, like Lance Lynn, a guy that La Russa had when they won the World Series in 2018 in his rookie year. I mean, 2011 and yeah. his rookie season. Lynn was like saying how things were changing and he's like, I think it's for the better, whatever he said. And um, he's like, I think that's okay. He's like, in my opinion, it should be okay. And then La Russa was like, yeah, well, Lance has a locker. I have an office. Like, yeah, that'll make the clubhouse Bro, come the together. Hell? Like, <laughs> you know, like, First of all, like he's saying that about a player who he won the World Series with. Beyond crazy. Yeah. Like they probably have a great relationship, I would assume. So the whole thing was nuts. Um Tim Anderson said something like Larusa is like the angry dad, and we're like the bad kids who don't listen or something. And he's like, That's okay. But like, really? That's that's not. You can put up a phase or a show all you want, making it seem like it's okay. That clubhouse is not okay right now. No, and, you know, this especially is just, after they just got swept by us in the Bronx this weekend. Yeah, we won all three games. So true, true. And they like, are not playing great. This isn't even like forget even just Larissa for a second. But dude, yeah, I feel like older generations always kind of like look at our generation. And they're like, oh, they're so oversensitive. Oh, they're just like a bunch of snowflakes. You know, like yeah. back in our day, you know, just to be like tougher, like manliness, bro. This is like, I don't know, man. This is the exact opposite of that. Like, exactly. Should, should my guys just like stop trying? Like, should they just stop trying to score once they? I don't know, man. Bro, it's similar to like the Tatis thing last year. Only this is worse. Yeah, I just didn't think I'd see it. Like, like, I don't know. I didn't no, think I'd I didn't see either. it again. Like, I, I thought it we was just over this. We've had this conversation. Yeah. You know? And there are certain things too, like that literally just couldn't make less sense about this whole thing. Like. The fact that he publicly said Mercedes was wrong, that's something you do behind closed doors, number one. Number yeah. two, you defend your player when he gets thrown at. You don't defend the opposing pitcher. That's number two. Number three, Rocco Baldelli is the Twins manager. We can talk about old people all we want. He's 39 years old. And in his head, throwing at Mercedes was the right call. I'm sorry, but like... That you could tell Duffy, the guy who got suspended or fined or whatever, who threw at him, did not want to do that. You could tell yeah. by his reaction after he did it. And he did it anyway because he was told to do it. Yeah. And that is fucked up because Baldelli literally could still be a player. And like we like to talk about how you could just hit a guy on the leg, you could just hit him, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, if you miss your location, you can ruin a guy's fucking life or his career, whatever oh, yeah. you want to view it as. If you hit someone in the head on accident, that we've seen, yes. like recently, we saw Kevin Pillar for an example with you guys. Um, yeah, I mean, I, obviously, obviously it wasn't I on purpose, I'm, but yeah, I think of Stanton like seven, right. eight years ago, of course. Yeah, so I don't know, man. <laughs> I just think, I think we got it. I think it's really just a general issue thing. Like, I, I was te even texting my dad about it, and he was kind of more on the side of Larusa. I was like, what? Was <laughs> like, yeah, but I, I guess it's just like I don't know. They just. They feel like it's like something of like a sign of disrespect. I, don't throw your freaking position player out there. Exactly. If you don't want to give up more runs. I don't know what to say, you know? Plain and simple, here's the fucking deal. They're unwritten rules, so they're not rules. Why the fuck is it a thing? It shouldn't be a thing, dude. I'm sorry, but like swinging 3-0 with a big lead, you can't – like players are playing to help their team to get paid yeah, and that's to a have good part. stats. Like – if you're going to increase your stats because the position player can't throw strikes and it's 3-0, you should be able to swing as much as you want, in my opinion. I don't know, man. That's just like – it doesn't make sense. What do you think of a mercy rule? One of the – I forgot right. who. Some manager brought it up recently. Listen, if you're going to complain about this, like, I don't know. I don't ever see a mercy rule being a thing, honestly, but – if it was, I, I saw someone, that manager, I forget who it was, the same person probably, though, said, like, yeah, if you're going to argue about it, like, or if you, whatever, you should have, like, a mercy rule. If you're down by 10 by the seventh inning, you should have the choice to, like, give up or something or whatever. And, like, I would hate that, but I see people's point, but I don't, I don't think that would ever happen, honestly. I don't know. Probably not. I just, I guess it oh. prevents position players from having to come in and pitch, but... But hey, funny story though. Like there are some position players. Obviously, they can get hurt out there. Yeah. Whatever. But like I know um, Neil Walker, for an example, when he was on the Phillies, 
he had never pitched in a game ever. Like, obviously, he's an infielder. And he was thinking about retiring, whatever. He was a veteran at the time. I think it was 2018, 19. Yeah. And um, he he had said to Joe Girardi, like, if you ever need me to, if it's like a blowout, like, I'll gladly go in there or whatever. And then he said, I, I listened to him on a podcast once, and he said, like, Joe gave him a look one game. He was like, Mm -hmm. when they were down by like 15 runs or something and he got to go in and pitch and he gets to tell his kids like i pitched in a big league game like that's pretty cool yeah so i think like some guys would like to do that obviously so like i don't think it should just be completely condemned you know what i mean yeah i don't don't think i I just feel like you have to know what you're getting yourself into when you do it yeah no i I have no opposition to it it's just i mean i don't either it's just the whole thing man I, i just I'm more interested to just see how this is going to play out with the White Sox this year. They're mm. obviously one of the best teams in the league. To have like a disconnect in the clubhouse, man, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if LaRusse is going to last past this year. I, just from like the things I'm hearing with the guy, like, like, like what you're saying, yeah. I just I, I feel like it can't work. There's just too much of a disconnect. Obviously, like a guy like Tim Anderson is one of like the most exciting guys in the game. He does bat flips. He does all this shit that yeah. a boomer like Larusa would hate. So, no. You know, I don't know. And like again, the guys are going to say they like him as much as they have to because people are going to keep asking. They're not going to want to start any shit. Yeah, they do not like him, man. There's no way they're saying the exact opposite of what he feels. I'm sorry, but like that does not work. <laughs> Dude, I don't mess with yeah. it. Not cool. Yeah. All right, so for Junk Bars of the Week, shockingly, we had more no-hitters. We had Spencer Turnbull going against Seattle, two walks, nine Ks. You mentioned Kluber at Texas, one walk, nine Ks. Also, Lucas Giolito in Minnesota going eight innings, two hits, three walks, one earned, and 11 Ks. So. Yeah, I thought the uh, Giolito one was interesting because I think one of the last few episodes we talked about how he was kind of having a – bad ish year now yeah um and he kind of turned it around so obviously again like we've talked about that in Giolito's the White Sox ace so we kind of knew he was going to turn it around that was a great start though against Minnesota the struggling twins team but still yeah also um, we are now are we one short of the record now for no hitters in a season I believe it's seven I think it was seven yeah so, we're so at six on May 24th hey, I think does it happen before the end of May you know I feel like the answer is no, but just nothing would surprise me at this point. It really wouldn't. I mean, no. <laughs> you saw, I mean, there was there was almost a no-hitter actually last night. Um, Adam Wainwright was pitching against the Cubs. Oh, yeah, yeah. He went eight innings, one hit, one walk, seven Ks. Um, you know, one hit. <laughs> that could have easily back. been a no-hitter. So, Wayne, oh, yeah. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Um, What's he, like 38 now? He's getting up there. I think he's 39, actually. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah, um, but he's still kicking it, man. He's having a kind of a up and down season, but hey, Wayne Wayne has got it. He's still got it, man. He's a great dude in the game. So I hope nice he pitches guy. until he's fifty. Yeah, no, legit. Yeah. And then a couple of years ago, little pitchers still in the Bronx. So Carlos Rodon going six innings, no walks, no runs, two hits, thirteen Ks. And then on the other side for you guys, Joe Montgomery. Seven innings, four hits, no walks, no runs, eleven Ks. Yeah, that was a fun game to watch. I was I was watching the whole game pretty much. And um Rodon is fucking filthy, man. I mean, he threw that no header earlier in the year, speaking of no headers, and yeah, six innings, thirteen strikeouts over six innings. We looked horrible. I mean, that was just disgusting. His slider, dude. I'm gonna go out here and say right now, I think his slider is the best in the game so far this year. Mm. Watching that against hitters on the Yankees, I know we strike out a decent amount, but I mean, yeah. made Judge looks silly. Glaber, who's been hot, looked horrible against that. Uh, I mean, it was good to see as a Yankee fan. I think I'm speaking for all the Yankee fans listening. It was good to see Monty pitch well. He has kind of had an up and down season. Um, this was his uh, career high in strikeouts, too. So that was uh, nice to see there. Our yeah. starting pitching has been crazy. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. But Monty was great. So yeah. But yeah, then, like we said, um, the Yankees swept. So we did beat Rodon. We didn't beat Rodon. We we ended up walking it off later on in the game. But um, Rodon had to be disappointed in that because he struck out thirteen over six innings. So tough luck, Dan. Yeah. You guys had the freaking triple play in the ninth the other night too. Yeah. 
that was yeah that was friday that was that same game yeah so it looked like chapman was gonna give up his first run of the season on friday and then he got the triple play to get out of it does he give up a run wow oh well he did he actually did yesterday oh okay Um, okay but we ended up winning in the bottom of the ninth yesterday so uh not as significant as it could have been but yeah he let up a home run to andrew vaughn yesterday in the ninth inning it was like a bomb that kid's a stud by the way Andrew Vaughn is supposed to be really good. I think he got mm-hmm. called up because of uh, Jimenez being hurt to start the season or whatever. Right, right. Wasn't Vaughn drafted like in 2019 or 2020 by them? I feel it like it was very right, recent yeah. and like he's barely had any minor league time and like he hit a homer off Chapman yesterday. So that was kind of nuts. But yeah. Yeah. All right. Some injury updates. Thank God Jacob DeGrom is coming back. He will start. Yeah. Tomorrow against Colorado, so badly needed. Oh, yeah. Your pitching rotation has been, like, really hurt, right? I feel like it's been like a bullpen game every day. (laughs) Freaking Joey Lachesi's coming in. Yeah, well, I don't think he did horrible the other day, did he? No, he he actually – Yeah. He did all right. It's just the fact we're, like, even using him in the first place. (laughs) I know, I know. So, So, I mean, again, how many runs runs does uh, he get support? On Tuesday, one, one. I'm I'm going with like three because Colorado's pitching isn't That's great, generous. but I could be surprised. I know. <laughs> My God, I I would hope yeah. so. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you got a couple of guys down the road. I mean, maybe the next week we'll be talking about it. Lugo coming back. Going over to Cleveland, Framil Reyes placed on the aisle with an oblique strain at five to seven weeks. That's so a, a pretty time, nice man. season. You don't really see a bleak like five to seven weeks right when it starts. That must have been pretty bad. I, that, yeah. I actually saw it. He It happened when he swung. He, like, made contact. I think he popped it up, and he literally just, like, I don't know, man. He just – you could tell something was up. So, that wasn't good. Damn. And then Kevin Biggio going on the IO with a cervical spine ligament strain. Right. That sounds overly specific. But... No, it, it sounds rough. Doesn't sound fun. It almost gives me like Prince Fielder vibes from when he oh. would always hurt his neck. But I don't dude, know, I man. Miss Prince Fielder. Oh, I dude. Prince Fielder was one of my favorite players <laughs> when he was on. I loved him, man. It, it was just I mean, every team he was on, it was just so fun to watch. From Milwaukee, when he was in Detroit, him and Miggy there was great. And even when he was on Texas, he was a part of those playoff teams in uh what was it? 14 and 15 or 15 and 16, maybe. I don't remember, but yeah, he was a stud, man, I always. Um, you know, a funny thing about that, I'm pretty sure he ended his career with the exact same amount of home runs as his dad. Right, right, yeah. So, that was pretty cool. <laughs> the simulation is real. Yeah. Um, then- Kevin, I mean, that's tough for the Blue Jays because they've kind of been keeping pace with the Yankees and the Red Sox and the Rays. And yeah. now, uh, I don't know, he's a big piece of that team. Division's been competitive. Like one through oh, yeah. four. I think like a, we have the winningest records in the league, I think, our division, um, besides the Orioles. But I think us top four, we have like three or four teams with a record like above six hundred winning percentage or something. Damn. Three or four of them are or like they're at least all four of them are above five hundred. So yeah, it's kind of nuts. Yeah, Baltimore has finally gone back down, but <laughs> yeah. It's gonna. It's, it's gonna still be like we said though. Mancini is gonna be a pain in everyone's ass this whole summer because oh, yeah. he's gonna be. Yeah. No, so. I feel like they're not gonna be fun to play. No. And um, then another else? injury I thought was significant actually was um, Kenta Maeda for the Twins. Like we were just talking about the Twins before. Yeah. That's another big piece that like he was in the Cy Young contention last year. Remember? Like you think he finished third or something? True. And, yeah. Uh, he hasn't been good this year. But he was on the IL now with like a right adductor strain. Is that something in your shoulder? I feel like maybe I don't know. But uh, like that yeah. was kind of significant for a team that's already struggling, like we said. Oh now yeah. They got Barrios as their ace, who has potential, but he could kind of be up and down. So. I feel like after Barrios, I can't name a starter on that team with my eight out. <laughs> Me neither, to be honest with you. I don't know any. That's yeah. not good. No, that's tough. Actually, you know what? I just thought of one. Jay Happ, former Yankee. Oh, wow. Jay Happ's over there. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's another one. Obviously, he's a great, great guy. So. Oh, yeah, no, truly. <laughs> and then what series are you looking forward to most upcoming week? 
Um, yeah, there's some good ones. I think, though, the best one is going to be this weekend. Uh, it's going to be Braves in City Field against you guys. Uh, that's mm. going to be a battle for first place, I think. The Braves are, what, one, two games behind you guys right now, I'm pretty I sure. Believe, yeah, something like that. So they've kind of picked it up. Um, like we said, Austin Riley has been killing it. So if DeGrom is starting Tuesday, will he miss that series? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He what do you may go, Sunday? pitch Sunday or yeah, Monday. Yeah. So if he doesn't pitch, though, that, that could be tough for you guys. So you gotta I, mean, hope. Hopefully. I think they, they might push him to pitch Sunday, I would say. Yeah. Because I think it's also on Sunday Night Baseball, so I'm pretty sure they'll try to get him. But he is coming off the injury, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you got first place on the line. That's a pretty good series. I like that. Yeah. What do you got? And then I got Tuesday and Wednesday this week is Dodgers at Astros. So Ooh. you got okay. Kershaw Granky on Tuesday. That's cool. Uh, I like that. Former teammates, yeah. yeah. I like that a lot, actually. And then the next day you got Bauer going in. So I'd love to see some <laughs> oh, fireworks. I'd be love fun. to see him out there screaming. I don't know. Just doing this thing. All right, so scored. do you think do you think Bauer hits anybody with a pitch? Speaking of hitting people with pitches. Because uh, I think this is the first time he's facing the Astros since everything happened. I'm going to say – I'm going to say no, but I kind of hope he does. I kind of hope he drills like two there or something. I could see him like – buzzing them in a lot but not hitting anybody like i could see him having like this stupid grin on his face like he's there but he's not gonna do it yeah. you know what i mean dude i, I also could kelly was back i was gonna say is he on the il right now i feel like he or is yeah he is man i if he does if he does come back though for this series maybe that would be awesome because uh you know having a game with bauer then go to kelly <laughs> oh would yeah just be awesome dude nice swing bitch <laughs> Dude, I mean, that was awesome last year. Like, because the Dodgers went there last year. That was when everything happened with Kelly. That was when it all happened, yeah. Yeah. And he got suspended for, what, like a week or some shit like that. It was stupid. Whatever the fuck it was. But, like, (laughs) I think that's going to be pretty interesting. But, you know, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's game. I think it'll be more low-key. I think the second game will be up in in arms about the cheating. But tomorrow will be cool, Granky versus Kershaw. Because yeah. they're like friends, you know, that'll be pretty cool. They're both veterans now. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting, too. I It's kind of obvious to me that Granky doesn't like being there in Houston because of everything that's happening. Yeah. Everyone knows that Granky is a guy who's kind of not a big personality. He kind of just does his own thing. And the spotlight's yeah. on them, so he hates that, I think. Sometimes, like, he'll literally tell the batter what's coming. and like, I have seen that. Yeah, he does that. <laughs> He did that against us, and I think Stanton, like, hit a bomb off of him, like, a couple <laughs> weeks ago or whatever. It was awesome. Like, he's, like, change up or something, and Stanton just crushed it. So, like, I really think he just wants to get traded out of there so badly. And being he's going against the Dodgers and he knows how much they hate them, I really – I'm interested to see what happens there. Bro, he, he does the Ephus pitch, too. It's <laughs> yeah. just, like, here's my, like, 55-mile-per-hour. I know. I'm, I'll never forget, like, last year he did that against Grisham in San Diego, and he didn't even know what to do. He just, like, he buckled, like, three like, times. What the hell, like, what the hell? Yeah, it was great. Dude, I, I think it'll be a good series. It's a two-gamer. I'm surprised it's only two games, but. Yeah. Well, when do the Astros go to L.A.? Later in the season? Like, I in so. August, maybe? I think it might be August or September. So, yeah, that I'm looking forward to a lot. I can't wait for that. <laughs> Yeah. That's if you get to go to that, man, you better try. Dude, I, I hope so. I hope I'm going back yeah. to New York for the summer, but I hope by yeah. the time I'm back in LA, that's when it happens. So yeah, that'd be great. And then dude, give us uh yeah, give us a stat of the week. Tell us a little bit about uh the Yankees starting pitching, how good it's been. Yeah, so stat of the week. Um past five games, no Yankee starter has let up any runs, and they've all gone at least five innings. So Damn. since the no hitter. Kluber went nine innings, two walks, nine strikeouts, like you said before. Next day, Domingo Herman goes seven innings, six hits, five strikeouts. Next day, we talked about Monty, four hits, 11 Ks over seven innings. Eric Cole on Saturday, seven innings, four hits, three walks, seven strikeouts, no runs, like you said. And then yesterday, Jameson Tyone, who has kind of been viewed as the weak link in our rotation, had his best start of the season, five innings, two hits, two walks, four strikeouts, and no runs. And those last three were pretty important because they were all against the White Sox, who have great offense. The first right. two were against Texas. Say what you want about that. But 
especially Montgomery start. I didn't bring this up before, but the White Sox are the best team in baseball against left-handed starting pitching. Oh, and God. Monty shut them down over seven innings. They didn't score any runs. So uh, it was pretty awesome. And I think the last time a team had five guys do this in a row – was in like 1932 or some shit like that really so, uh yeah so to go five that's innings and no runs every day yeah that's kind of surprising i, feel I, know. Like it would have, I don't know i feel like it would have been more recent too. with some of the great right. rotations has been but yeah because i mean again though you you think about it like not letting up a run as a starter for like five straight days is like kind of crazy because like you could still have a great start go seven innings and allow like a solo homer yeah like, to, to go five days in a row without allowing a run from the starting pitcher, I mean, it's like no one would have predicted this about our rotation. Yeah, like we were predicted if Kluber and Tyone can do okay, then we'll have an okay rotation. No one expected yeah. this because Herman's been a big surprise. Obviously, we talked about the sexual assault things, whatever, you know, that's always going to be tainted on him. But looking specifically at numbers, he's had a great season. There's no real way around that. His ERA is at 3.05 right now. Um, and he was kind of viewed as our number five starter. Now that's kind of moved to Jamison Tyone. But, hey, if you have a number five starter that can go five innings and not allow a run every time, that yeah. works. So, Who do you think the best guy in the rotation is after Cole? Like, who's your number two? Man, I mean, right now I got to go with Kluber because of how good he's looked his past, like, six starts. Yeah. But, you know, I think it could easily be Monty because he's a lefty in the playoffs. Maybe you go lefty after Cole or something, switch it up. Yeah. If he sticks to what he's doing. I mean, I don't know. Herman, like I said, he's at great ERA right now. I think, in my opinion, playoff rotation would be Cole, Kluber, Monty, Herman, and Tyone. But – um, you know, good. right right now you could really flip it any way you want after Cole, in my opinion. So yeah, it's nice to have. Yeah, it's the complete opposite of you guys right now. So no, nah, yeah, I I we're signing people off the street to come in. Yeah. Hey, dude, just re-sign Bartolo. I'm I'm all for it. I wonder where <laughs> he is know, right now. I think he's playing in like the Mexican league or something. So oh, and he'd definitely come and just give us like five innings, like two runs. I know. I like okay, I, I have no doubt he'd just be back to who he was, you know. You know what? I thought I saw this yesterday. Today is actually his birthday. Wow. Was so it like 46? 48. 48? <laughs> 48, dude. I still have no doubt, you know. I I, I <laughs> non-ironically would love to sign him. Bro, he'd come into City Field, smash a homer, go like Nine innings, no runs, dude. That would be great. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. Just you guys got to sign him back for like a day. Just put him as a hitter. Like, pitch I, at him and see if he has another homer. <laughs> especially if, like, there's nothing on the line in September. I know. Exactly. That'd be great. Dude, I wish. Well, yeah. that wraps it up for us this week. We'll be back next week with more stuff. Take it easy. Yep. We'll see you guys next week.